Welcome back aliens, my name is Davin Vetti and in this video we'll talk about Express.js. See when you want to make a website, when you want to make the entire website using JavaScript, so basically we can use JavaScript everywhere, right? The front-end, back-end, database and the framework as well. Now when you say front-end, we have all used JavaScript in the front-end, right? And then we can also use JavaScript in the back-end uh, thanks to Node.js. Do we have any framework for web development? See, when you talk about different languages, like we have Python, we have Django framework, we have uh, Java, for that we have Spring framework. Now, when it comes to JavaScript or when it comes to Node.js, the web framework we are going to use here is Express.js. But then why do we need a framework? See, Node.js provides you HTTP module, right, using which you can uh, create a website where a user will send a request and you have to send a response. That works. But when you say you want to build a web application, it will not be having a simple request response thing, right? You will not be saying, hey server, and server will say, hello world. That's not how, how it works. You build a website where you have multiple type of requests. Maybe you are requesting for an image. Maybe you are requesting for a data. Maybe you are sending the data to the server. And also, there will be different type of links, right? So you're requesting a home page, you're requesting a contact page, you're requesting for the data about the user. Right, or you are requesting for all the products from Amazon. So basically you send a request for a particular endpoint. So for a different type of response which you need, you have to send a different type of request. And on the server side, your function, there will be different functions available, right? And that function will be executed when you send that type of request. And to handle that, it's, it's good to use a web framework. And Express.js is an amazing framework, it is fast and it provides you minimum features so that you can build an amazing website. I mean, I'm talking about the backend part actually. To understand this more, let's go to this website which is expressjs.com and if you can see, it says it is fast, unopinionated, minimalistic web framework for Node.js. See, fast, it makes sense. Unopinionated means it will allow you to do whatever you want. See, some of the frameworks, they provide you their own basic feature. They will say, hey, this is how you have to do it. This is how you have to do it. Express says, do whatever you want. So that's the definition and this is the latest version we can use. Uh, so let's start, let's build a simple application using Express.js. Now when I say simple, I'm literally talking about a base application, a very basic application. So let's go to VS Code and this is where let's build it. Now to start with, let's write a code which will return you hello world. I mean that's how you start every time, right? To get started, you have to make sure that you, in your machine you have Node.js and Visual Studio Code. In this machine, I have Node.js, which is 14.1.0. Let's verify once. I will say Node version, and you can see this is the latest version which we got. And you can also have uh, latest version of VS Code. Now, once you have that, let's get started. Now, first of all, if you want to use Express.js or Express Framework in your project, so let's first get Express in our code. Uh, so let's say const, I want Express in this machine, so in this, uh, in this project. So I will say const Express equal to now how do we get it so of course we have seen this function which is require and in this require will mention express we need we need express and as we have talked about this before you have different modules available in node.js some of the modules are there in the system and some of the modules are coming from the external server what about express now basically express is coming from the third party server or basically you can say npm okay but will this work because we have not installed express on this machine so before installing it, let's try to run this code and let's see what happens. But even before running, we have to do some more thing. Uh, we have to also initialize, we have to also start the express. And we have to get all the functions, all the properties of it. And the way you can do that is by saying const app. Now in this app, I want express functions to be there. So I will say express. This is how you initialize your express. So we got express handler, we got uh, express started. And you, you can use app to do everything with uh, with Express now. But will this work? Let's say save this. Save this and go back to your terminal. And this is where I will say node and let's run this code. We'll say app. So we can also say app or you can say app.js. Both works. Let's say app. And we got error. Let's see what this error is. So this says cannot find a module Express. Oh, that's tricky. Why it is not there? See, the thing is, whenever you work with modules, which is coming from the third party, the first thing is you have to install them. And once you install it, it will come in that folder. So the folder which we are working with is Node X. Now in this folder, we'll be having uh, the, the Node modules folder. 
Okay, so how do we get it? So first of all, let me say npm, npm, the command is, in, you can use install or you can use i, uh, both works. In fact, if you don't know how to use this, you can just go to npm.js and here you can search for the product which you're searching for, which you want. So I want express. So when you say search, it will give you the exact match. Now, how do we install it? So there will be a command here. Can you see that it says install uh, npm i express so you can mention i or you can mention install both works in fact you can also mention the version number which you want uh, by default it will give you this version but you can also mention the version by specifying add rate and the version number so let me simply say install express let's get the default one and let's say enter now it will take some time to download uh, express from the npm server okay it's done and if you can see on the left hand side in the node modules if you expand it you will see the module of express oh but hold on we got not just express express will be here but with express you got some other modules as well now these other modules are the dependencies for express so you so for your project express is a dependency and for express this all modules are the dependencies and that's that works Okay, uh, but let, let, at least we got Express, right? Now it should not give you any error. Let me just run this code. Node app, and this time you can see we don't have any error. That means Express is there and we can, we can use it now. But then what we want to achieve with Express? As we mentioned, we want to run Hello World. Okay, that's tricky. Uh, but then do you think we'll only use a Express for Hello World? That's not the case, right? See, whenever you send a request, maybe that request is for the website, maybe that request is for a particular URL. Now in this case, I don't have any website. I just want to run it on localhost with a port number 9000. And whenever I request for this home page, it should return hello world. That's the first thing we want. And as, if we, as, as you can see, we are not getting any data. The next thing is, what if I want to fetch the data about a particular alien? So I want uh, localhost colon 9000 slash alien because that's how you build a website, right? You'll be having multiple URLs. So when you say enter here, it should give you, let's say no in ready. Uh, that's what we want. And maybe I want a particular alien with an ID uh, 20. So that's how you build a URL. So if you know the concept of REST API, uh, that's how you build a URI. So you mention the website name, then you mention the resource, what you want alien. You have to also pass the ID, which alien you want. So I want the alien with the ID number 20. And this will change, right? And that's why we say it's a dynamic URL because this will keep changing based on the user. Someone will say, hey, I want 21. Someone will say, I will, I want 28. So when you send a request for 28, your Node.js will use this 28 to fetch the name of the user from the database. Because you are saying 28, Express or Node.js need to search about who is this 28. So it will find a query to database. It will say, hey, I got the ID 28. I want the name. And that's why it is dynamic because it will change according to users. And maybe you want to pass the query string. So basically when you say uh, 28 like this, you're passing a parameter. But what if you want to pass a query string? Now this thing changes depending upon whatever application you're building. So you can also pass, uh, you can also say question mark and you can say what? Um, name is equal to Naveen. I want to search data about Naveen. Or maybe I want to search the ID as 28. So this is the query string. Right, so, so you can use the query string or you can use uh, parameters, that's your choice. I want to do this thing in this, vid in this video. So just let's get started. Now, first of all, you want to start the server because the server is not running yet, okay? Uh, so how do we start the server? It's very simple, you say simply say app dot, you have to pass listen, it's so simple, right? And then in this listen, you have to mention the port number. You can use any port number, let me use 9000 here. You can use any available port number. So let me use 9000. And doing this, let me just restart the server. Okay, so that you can see it is starting the server. It, that's why we got that prompt. Uh, it will allow, it will give, it will give you that prompt only once, don't worry. Now, once you got the server up and running, let's go back to the browser and let's send the request to the homepage. Oh, can you see that? We have not got any error, uh, but we got cannot get slash, but we have not got any error, right? We got something. So your server is up and running. But we don't want this. What we wanted is to get hello world. How do we do that? See, that's the first thing we want to we want to get hello world. But what we can also do here is uh, I want to show I want to print here if the server is started or not. 
how do we do that so what we can do is we can give a comma and we can pass a function here by saying request response and here we can say console.log and we can print running at least we will see the server is running on the console let me stop the server once and let's restart and you can see it's, it is it's saying running that means server is running so if the once the server started it will print running but then this will not solve our problem right we wanted to print hello world right uh, so how do we do that now to, to achieve that we have to understand the concept of routers now what is router or routing is in your website you'll be having multiple links right so for different type of link you will pass different request and for that different request you'll be having different response so how to handle a particular request is decided with the help of routing concept uh, okay so express has that concept in build so let's use that so what we can do is we can specify the routes so we can say app dot uh, you can use a method which is get so in http we have different methods we have get post put and delete we'll talk about other methods in a separate video how do use how do we how do we use get how do we use post uh, how do we use put or delete get is simply fetching data from the server okay so when you say post you are sending data when you say get you are receiving data so let's use get because we want to receive data and this get will take two parameters the first parameter is your the url which you are which you are hitting so basically when you go to the home page you are requesting for this url which is slash so here you are requesting for the home page you are requesting for slash but once you send the, this request, what will happen? You have to execute the function, right? So you will say function here. And this function will take two parameters by... So this function will take two parameters. And you have to execute something. So what I will execute is I want to print hello world, right? So we can do that. It's very simple. You will say console.log. And you will print hello world. Simple, right? Uh, okay, let's verify will this, this work. So let me stop the server. Let's start again and go back to the browser. Okay, uh, we once we refresh the page, you can see the request. We have still not got the response yet. But if you go to console, you can see we got hello world. Oh, we were expecting hello world on the browser, right? Something went wrong. Okay, what went wrong is when you send a request and when you say I want a response, you should not be saying console.log, right? Because console.log will print on the console. We want to send response on the browser. In that case, we'll not be saying console.log. We have to use a special object. If you can see, we have two objects here, which is request and response. Request object is which request object will have data which is going from client to server, and response object will have the data from which is going from the server to client. So I want to send data from server to client. So we have to say response. Dot. The method name is send, and then you will send hello world this should work okay let's go back and refresh oh we got hello world there okay even before refreshing because it was sending a request and it was it was waiting for the response okay so we got hello world so we have achieved our first thing we got hello world but then we also wanted to have this thing right when you say request for alien it should get it should give you data about alien how do we do that and for that we can create a separate function so we can say app.get and this time we are requesting for alien and it should execute a function when you request for alien. We'll say RDQ RES. It will execute and it will say response.send will send a response as welcome back alien. That's it. Let's see if that works. Let me just restart the server once. Go back here, refresh. Oh, it is still not working. Is it because of the slash? Let's try that. Oh, so I was missing slash there. Okay, uh, but we got welcome back alien, right? That's how you can, that's how you specify the routing. So for different URLs, you, you will have different functions which is working for, working for it. Okay, uh, what I also want here is, I don't want to fetch, I, want, I don't want to print welcome back alien. What I want is, if you, if you pass a particular alien by saying 20, I want to return Naveen, 21, Kiran, 22, Hirsch. So based on what you send, I want to send that data. Now, of course, I don't. I will not write the entire logic because for that you have to write if else, right? So if it is 20, you have to return with Naveen. If it is 21, Kiran. If it is 22, you have to return Hirsch. So that's the if condition you have to complete. Okay, that's your assignment. What I will do is I will just show you how do you accept a dynamic URL. So for that, I will say again, app dot get, 
and in this I will specify alien now since I want a dynamic URL I will specify 20 and then I will say function request response and then we can respond it with hey Naveen okay uh, this should work now let's try it's running refresh can you see that we got hey Naveen but the problem is the moment you change this URL with you say 21 it's not working it's because we are still specifying 20 there we are not specifying 21 we want to make it dynamic because this will change so in that case you can hold that in a particular holder a placeholder which is id in this case or the param so instead of using uh, so we, now we got id right so we can fetch this data so i will say uh, const i will say id is equal to how do you fetch it so we can use a request object request object has something called as params and in this param you can specify id so whatever you mention here the same thing you will assign here okay so which is id id aid aid that's your choice and then you can use this id you can up, now you can use if condition and you can check but I, I will not do that i will simply print this id as it is just to show that it is dynamic and let's stop this running refresh and you can see that even if we say 21 it works even if it's 20 it works so whatever data you pass in the in the address bar it will print on the on the page but that's not what we wanted right we wanted to have a different code that's what you will do and the hint is you have to use if else you have to check for the value of the id okay that works but what if you want to specify with the help of maybe the query string maybe id is equal to 20. now what will change here is you can see it is still going for alien because that's a request you are passing the query string so you can change this alien as it is here what you can do is you can get that name so you can say const name is equal to we are passing name or id okay we are passing an id so with the id equal to request dot query because this time you are going for query not params you just specify id now once you got the id you can come back here and you can say welcome back alien and you can also mention the id here restart the server so you can say refresh so you can see we have worked with both now we can use the params which is slash 20 uh, which is mostly used for the REST API. But if you want to work with the browser way, you know, when you go to Google and when you search something, example, if you search for Java, uh, if you can see Google, google.com slash search question mark Q equal to Java. This is the query string. Right? That's how it works. If you search for Telisco, that's how it works. Search and then it will search for the things. Okay, so that's how we use query string and padam. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this but the only okay there is one issue I know you might be thinking about this is every time you make a simple change you have to install the server right so if you don't want to do that you have to install one more module which is nodemon uh, using which you can actually you don't have to restart the server you simply have to save it will automatically restart the server behind the scene so yeah that's how that's much from this video where we have used express.js to create some URL mapping in node.js so that's it. I hope you enjoyed. Let me in the comment section and do subscribe for other videos. Bye. -bye.